Hey guys, it's Susie Lolly, 17 year educator turned technology trainer, here to share with you some more tips. And in this series, which is going to be our remote learning series, I'm going to dive into everything you need to know to create a Bitmoji classroom. So if you already have a Bitmoji, then you know why in the world you need a Bitmoji classroom, but maybe you don't. So I'm going to take this moment to convince you. A Bitmoji classroom is something that you can post in any kind of a virtual learning environment, whether you are doing a synchronous lesson, you can pull up your Bitmoji Classroom to show your students, or you can post it at the top of Canvas or at the top of Teams. I'm going to show you both of those at the end of this video. But it basically is a way to get your kids' attention, increase engagement. It's a way to host links or videos in a fun, easy to access way. And then I stand on the shoulders of giants. So some specific ways that you can use Bitmoji Classroom, you can just create your announcements or your agenda on it. That's the most basic one. You can have a little read aloud corner with clickable books. I'm going to show you some of these in just a minute. You can use it for centers. If you have kids go to different, maybe we're talking about teams, they go to different channels and teams. Or in Canvas, they go to different modules and they complete a center that's, that is hosted on one of these Bitmoji classrooms. You can feature student work. You can have a comedy club where kids send in a joke and they get to be featured on your Bitmoji classroom. Or you can have a seesaw link that goes there or screenshots of work that they do in your Bitmoji classroom. Or you can host a video of the day or a morning meeting. So if you want to know why, that's why it gets the kids engaged, excited. You can do lots of things in it. But if you want to know how, that's what I want you to stay tuned for next. So are you one of the few people in the world who has not still made a Bitmoji? No, I'm just kidding. I don't know how many people in the world have made one or haven't. But if you haven't ever made one, you need to go on your phone first or your iPad, and you need to download the Bitmoji app. You will have way too much fun. Think of it as virtual paper dolls. <laughs> Uh, making your face look like your face, adding all your features, and then getting to dress it. I am so boring because I've kept mine dressed the same way no matter the season for years and years, and I've kept her having asymmetrical hair. Once you have Bitmoji on your phone, then you can add it to your Chrome toolbar up here at the top. I just got it by going to the Chrome Web Store. I think I showed this in another video for something else. But if you go to the Chrome Web Store, and you search Bitmoji, you can install Bitmoji on your task or on your toolbar up here at the top on your extensions bar. So I have Bitmoji, I've already dressed it on my phone, but when I log in here with that same login, it knows how I'm dressed, what my face looks like, and puts me in all kinds of situations. Now, not all of these are completely appropriate, so if you happen to see one that's weird, I'm not a weirdo. <laughs> so I can search for a particular Bitmoji and that's just how you create it. You're going to need a Bitmoji to put it in different scenes, which I'll show you examples of on the next clip. If you're here and you want to get a Bitmoji out, you just right click it and it'll say copy image. So I can copy that and put it wherever I want. So keep that in mind as we go through the examples. I want to walk you through some examples of where I learned about Bitmoji Classroom because I cannot take credit for things I didn't make up. <laughs> I definitely, I think I came back from a vacation and somebody said, have you seen a Bitmoji Classroom? So I've put on this slide for you a, a um, QR code if you want to pause the video, but do it later, like rewind. I want you to watch this first. But you can pause the video and you can come back and scan and get to this Wakelet collection. Wakelet's another story for another day. But there's a whole collection on different resources for creating Bitmoji classrooms. If After I show you how to do it, if you just want some things that are already done for you, you can find them here. But just some different examples I wanted to show you of how people have used them. You can tell when somebody's elementary and when I'm not because you'll see my classroom is a lot less, um, I don't know, a lot less stuff on the wall. But anyway, there's a Wakelet collection you can visit for a lot of resources that I want to show you. But I want to also show you a couple examples of Bitmoji classrooms I created. And I don't want to show you that toolbar. <laughs> when I first learned about it, I learned about it in Google Slides. And so I created one that was like, if my house were clean and stylish, this is what it would look like. <laughs> and when I present, um, then if I go full screen, you'll see that's kind of off. You know, I'm really proud of it. This is my signature color here. There's a video playing on the, um, you'll notice from my YouTube channel, you'll see a video playing on the whiteboard. And then I had another one that I set up that was more like if I were working in my classroom, you see, I recycled some of the materials, but I definitely have like a teacup on my desk. That's a trademark of me. I love tea. And um, this was more like stack of papers on my desk because I was an English teacher. And this one, I, I wrote the agenda on the board and then different items were clickable on the agenda. So I'm going to show you how to do all this, but I wanted you to see some examples of mine. 
And then also to show you that when I uh, am working in PowerPoint, I can do the same thing. So I was able to take those same backgrounds and make them work in PowerPoint. So you want to know how? That's what I'm here to show you. Stay tuned. I'm focusing on PowerPoint in this tutorial, but a lot of these steps will apply to Google Slides. The reason I'm focusing on PowerPoint is because when I've done a search, and there may be more research resources now, but there was hardly anything on how to do it in PowerPoint. And I know a lot of people are using Office 365 integrations or the Teams, you know, Teams as their collaboration platform. And so PowerPoint works really well in that instance. And I wanted to show you the same things you can do in Google Slides with a Bitmoji Classroom you can do in PowerPoint. Now I want you to notice something else. I am in full PowerPoint. I'm not in Office 365 like the online version. I'm in the full app. So if I just happen to be in office.com, I could always open in the full app from there. But this is the full app and this is the best way to make links work in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a blank slide. I'm just going to right click here and do layout blank. Okay. And this is your canvas. Pretend this is your classroom and you have your Bitmoji waiting to put in, but you're going to decorate your scene first. Now I'm not going to decorate a whole scene in front of you, but I'll just give you the gist of it. If you'll go to the insert menu pictures and then, not that, excuse me, if you go to the insert menu online pictures, they used to be under the same little bar and you would pick which one you want. And you just type things like, not coach, couch, and I'm going to type PNG. PNG usually means it has a transparent background uh, that's not always reliable, but when I search that, I should be able to find couches that are, that are transparent, and I can click insert and put them onto my scene. Now, because PowerPoint is kind, it will, also, it will always give credit to who created this. You can move that down to your notes section. You can delete it, whatever you want to do. I'm definitely not leaving it in the middle of my scene. So I have a couch here. You know, maybe I need a lamp or a rug. I'll just show you a couple things. I'm going to go to insert online pictures, rug, PNG. I had the most trouble when I was doing my rug because of the angle. And so we're going to try it and see how it works. And you'll notice sometimes that you're like, okay, my couch, <laughs> my couch is covered up by my rug. If you'll right click it and say send to back, then that will allow you to work with it better and also to shrink it so it doesn't look like there's a giant rug on a little tiny couch. So you'll play around with this. I'm not going to get this perfect with you watching me. It's like doing math in front of people. <laughs> it doesn't always work. So I'm going to bring that up there and then I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to get like a desk. And that Wakelet collection I shared with you, other people have gone out and find, found all kinds of stuff for you. So if you're not picky and you're like, Susie, I just want functional, then use other people's stuff. So I'm going to say, I think I said desk, but that's okay. I'll pick a lamp anyway. You know what? I need a floor lamp because I just didn't put any table up there. I'm going to do PNG to try to find one that does not have a big white background on it. Insert. Put that in the corner. And you just keep on going, okay? So again, every time you get those credits that you're like, I don't really want that in there, you can delete it. This looks like it's floating in midair. You get the point, Okay. And then the point of this is that you can make your Bitmoji do different things. So again, this could be you working from home. You can have a laptop, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I've got to put my Bitmoji in here. So I'm going to go to Chrome. I just was there for Bitmoji. I'm going to click my extension. And I'm going to look for Pose. And again, if I get something weird, sorry. <laughs> this is me. I don't know. Let's look for Sitting. Could have done this ahead of time, but I wanted you to watch me. So not sitting on the toilet. We will not do that one. <laughs> and then I'm going to go here and I can finagle with her to make her sit where I want her to sit. Now she will have short legs. You're going to notice in one of mine. And if, if she doesn't, if you make her full size, sometimes she looks like a giant head. Okay. So she'll just have to have short legs and be dangling off the couch. Maybe some of you, that's your, that's how you are anyway. You have short legs, and so this will blend in. <laughs> and that lamp accidentally made giant. You get the point, okay? So like here, I put her behind a chair, and the way that it's angled doesn't look like her legs are, sh are so short. So you can mess with it. This one, she's standing up and pointing. I say she as if she's a real person. But you get the point. You decorate it however you want to decorate it, Okay. And then we're going to talk about how to make clickable links and then how to set this so you can use it over and over again. Now we're going to talk about exporting and locking your background. So I'm going to go to a scene that I actually did finish, but you'll notice I have a whiteboard here, but I've left it blank so I can reuse it. 
So one reason you want to lock your background is so that every day that you make a new agenda, you don't have to delete the old agenda. You might need that for posterity's sake or for your students to reference later. I don't want to have to delete what I already created each time. The second thing is I'm going to show you how to set it as a background so that it can't be moved around. Like this slide's already been set as a background and I can't move this image around at all. Okay, so let me show you those two steps. First of all, if I want to save this as a picture, I've got it decorated exactly how I want it to be. I'm going to go to File, Export, Change File Type, choose JPEG, and save it. It'll ask you if you want to save just one or the whole presentation. I just choose one because I want to save a single image and I don't want it to do a zip file or anything like that. So I want you to pretend you have it saved. I'm going to pause and I'll show you that in just a minute. And now, say I've already used this before, I want to make it as a new agenda and I want to set it as the background. I'm going to do a new slide, control M for more slides, and I'm going to do insert picture. This time I did mean to do picture. I'm going to do desktop. I'm going to find where I did save it and I called it Bitmoji Classroom Background so that way it would for sure be um, a background. It came in the right size because I had already set it that way, but look, it's still movable, so I don't really want to do that. I'm going to instead show you how you can set it as a background. So I'm going to do right click on the background, format background, picture or texture fill, insert from a file because I saved mine on my desktop. I called it Bitmoji Classroom Background and now that is not movable. So the way I showed you first, which so, sorry was a misstep honestly, <laughs> was it could still be moved. That is how you save it as a picture. That part we got right and I didn't want to start my recording over. Um, but how you set it as a background ensures that each time you use it, you can uh, not have to recreate it. And then another tip is just go ahead and duplicate this a few times so you've got it for future reference. So if I right click on the slide and click duplicate, duplicate, I'm sure there's a keyboard shortcut for that. You can let me know in the comments but now it's ready to go. Now, how do I get my clickable links on there? Well, I'm gonna show you that, stay tuned. So there are two types of main objects you can link to in PowerPoint. One of them is an image, and one of them is a set of words, or you can paste an ugly link, but no, nobody probably wants to take time making a cute Bitmoji classroom and using an ugly link. So let me show you, for example, if I wanted words, I have already saved this, set it as my background, and then all I did here is add an invisible text box. When you add a text box from the insert menu, it doesn't have any lines around it, so you can type in it without it being tacky. So I wrote some words, can I click this? I highlight over those and right click, and that's where my link menu is, and I just put in whatever link I want it to go to. Okay, I've already done that on this one. The same thing with an image. So I just took a screenshot from a video. You, you might have a video, of course, this is my YouTube channel video, shameless plug. But if you had a different video you wanted them to go to, Bill Nye the Science Guy, whatever it is, you could take a screenshot of that as your linkable object. And then you still right click, go to link. Mine says edit because I've already put one in there. And then I made it go to YouTube or you can make it go wherever. So it's still clickable. Now the one caveat in PowerPoint, we're using again full PowerPoint, not Office 365 right here, is that if they want to just be able to directly click the links, they will have to put the push the slideshow button Otherwise, it's control plus click. It does tell them that when they hover, but that might just be a little nuance that you need to teach your students. I think it's a good life lesson anyway, since, you'll, since a lot of business uses PowerPoint. If you watched my series on Canvas for Littles, I've already made a whole video on how to import your Bitmoji Classroom into Canvas with clickable links. So you see a thumbnail at the top of the screen that'll show you what video to look for, and I'll also try to link it in the description box below. But what I would be remiss if I didn't do is to show you how to share it in Teams because I'm working in PowerPoint, that's a Microsoft product, and it plays really well with Teams. And so I wanna show you how I would share my Bitmoji Classroom, still make it clickable if I were working in Teams. So the first step is exporting it as a PDF. Again, if you don't know how to do that, go to that other video that I've got that I'm referring to here. And then once it's a PDF, you're gonna upload it into the team where you wanna share the clickable links. And so I'm gonna go to my desktop, and I've got one called Bitmoji Classroom. That's a PDF. Um, you don't have to put it in class materials. You can put it wherever. If you drag it there, it'll still work. And then you're just gonna go to your plus sign on whatever channel you want to add this with clickable links. You're gonna click Add a tab, and you'll notice that PDF is one of the choices, and you have to already have it pulled in again, but you'll see my Bitmoji Classroom PDF is there. What I love about Teams, just like with Canvas, is that it brings the content in rather than sending kids out. 
And so when they click on this tab, guess what? All the links I made, they even highlight themselves, which is a little added bonus when you use PDF. It'll tell you that it's clickable because it turns yellow and has a link. So how cool is that? So I hope you found out how to create one. What's the purpose? How are they engaging? And then two ways to share with your students. If you did enjoy this video, I'd love for you to share it on your favorite social media channel. Leave me a comment below. Even take a screenshot and tweet me. I would love to see your Bitmoji Classroom uh, featured in your Canvas, in your Teams, wherever you're sharing it. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.